This is Brett from Azeroth Rediscovering. I just wanted to get on here and give a quick preface. I'm not a World of Warcraft expert. I'm going to sometimes say some things about World of Warcraft that are incorrect. Also, our experiences are going to differ from yours. We are going to miss a cool quest or misremember something. It's bound to happen. I research as much as I see fit possible for an episode within reason. This podcast is meant to document our journey to max level and possibly help you remember some cool times about leveling and questing or little cool details you may have forgotten. Also, our recording will improve. This is the first time we've recorded a podcast. Jess now has a new microphone, so she sounds much better, and our overall quality is improved on the future episodes. That being said, let's get into the podcast. Uh, In this podcast, we will follow a former wow player named brett that is me uh we will follow his journey as he introduces azeroth to a brand new wo- world of warcraft player that is jess say hi jess please hello hello everybody that is jess so jess um how long have you been playing video games um I I don't really play many video games. I think when I was growing up, I I played through. I mean, I played casually, very little with my brothers. Um, your basic Super Nintendo games. Um, but as far as games I have personally been interested, mm-hmm. I played uh, I played through Crash Bandicoot. Um, I played through Tomb Raiders. One and two, and I think, I think I finished three. I may not have even finished Tomb Raider three. Um, beyond that, like I haven't really played many games. Uh, I, I do have Battle.net installed on my computer. I have Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm installed. I also have Smite installed. I have played through tutorials on both Heroes and Smite. Uh, they never really. You know, it was never really something I was super interested in. Uh, out of the three, I probably enjoyed Heroes or Hearthstone the most, uh, probably because I I, I kind of dabbled with Magic: The Gathering uh, with you actually, uh, and then I I realized that Hearthstone was pretty similar, so I kind of got interested in that. Other than that, uh, I am not much of a gamer at all. I like to watch video games be played more than I like to play them. Okay, great. So you haven't played much. Um, what do you know about World of Warcraft? So, like I said, I have Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone both installed on my computer. I've, I've watched those be played uh, a lot. I'm familiar with... Uh, I... I, I it's my understanding that the characters are the same um, in all of these games. Uh, and so I, I I know there's classes, like I, I'm familiar with that from Hearthstone where there's mages and, and priests and paladins. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with some of their names or some of the things that they yell out. Uh, very few abilities. I, I, I know... I know small factoids, but I don't know that I'm familiar enough with them to piece them together in actual gameplay. I know that polymorph is a thing that happens. Uh, You turn into a sheep. Um, I know Loktar is is a greeting, I believe. Um, Other than that, I I mean, I kind of know some names, and that's that's about the extent of my knowledge. Uh, And I I only know that from these other games. If, if you're asking me what I know about World of Warcraft, the only thing I'm going into this knowing is that there are team fight or maybe raids where you you group up with people you uh, you don't know, I guess. Maybe you do know them, like, like they're your WoW friends, um, and you... People have roles that they're responsible for. Uh, I think there's there's somebody that is supposed to do like damage. Uh, what I do know of this for certain is that there is there is a role of a healer, and I know this because I 
I had a friend that once told me he he was the healer in a raid that they had planned for a Tuesday night and like then his girlfriend came over and he he fell uh he fell behind on his healing duties. He was preoccupied. That's <laughs> what I know of World of Warcraft. How how does that summarize my experience? That sounds, I mean, that that sounds, you know, like a lot of people um, at least have heard of the game. You know, I think it got up to something like, um, and, and I, I don't know exactly, maybe 11 million players could, could possibly even be more than that. So most people have at least heard of the game. Um, or, you know, if someone has been interested in video games, um, they're familiar with the RPG element of it. <clears throat> um, maybe, and maybe not so much the MMO RPG, which would be the massive um, massive multiplayer online okay. element. Um, they very well could have made it through their gaming career never touching one of those. Uh, but most people have, um, I would say, I would say a, a good portion of, of video game players have dabbled in an MMO at some point. And more than likely, it was WoW because it, it is the most successful um, MMO RPG that has existed so this am i correct in saying that world of warcraft has always been a game that you pay monthly to play yes so all of these 11 or 12 million people have have committed to paying for this monthly and like i mean i know this is huge it just seems like a normal like if you buy a game on you know, Xbox or whatever, it's $65 and you're done, like, you know, aside from special editions. But this is, like, this is a commitment. Like, people play this forever, and they just keep spending a monthly fee to play this game. That is correct. That is that is mind-boggling to me as somebody that, like... Like, I pay a monthly subscription to Netflix and Spotify, but... Those bring, I mean, I guess this brings people joy, like that brings me joy. It's just hard for me to imagine when I think of video games, like it's a price and you pay it and it's done and and then you have it. And and that is true. I would say many people would have the counter argument of, well, yes, I would have many video games, but each one of those video games would be probably sixty dollars or so. So you can make the argument that if someone buys a video game once a month or even every, what, four months, um, they are paying the same as a WoW customer would pay monthly. So if you, if you think of it in terms of that, then the 15 a month doesn't sound too terrible because it, it's this perpetual game and... Um, and they're they're almost always adding new content in some shape, um, some shape or form, um, or, or balancing tweaks. You know there are patches. Um, I think you know every Tuesday s some are, are much bigger than others. Some actually add content, so some will add um, you know a, a a dungeon or a boss. N not necessarily a boss, but you know it might add a, a dungeon or it might um, you know the event. Um, at the time of this recording, uh, WoW's 12th anniversary is coming up. Um, also, the Dark Moon Fair is available, and these are these are events that happen. You know, they're 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 timed events, and they don't stay around forever. So, y you want to kind of take advantage of them. It's like, well, I, I can't quit next month because you know I, I want to um, you know I want to do the the Thanksgiving stuff. Um, right, right. Or, that and then, sense. it makes a lot more sense. Like it doesn't get stale. It, like you keep paying because it keeps changing. And I, I guess I never really considered that. Uh, and that that does make it cool. And also, it's, it it kind of seems like people that play WoW like. I, I might be really generalizing here, and I hope it's not offensive. But it seems like that's kind of their game. Uh, as opposed to people that, you know, like, collect PlayStation games or whatever. So the, the money you spend on WoW, if it's your only, like, serious interest, uh, I mean, I guess it, it kind of 
evens itself out over time in comparison to, um, you know, other types of video games that you pay for once, one time. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> for sure. So, I mean, there is, um, you, you said, you know, it doesn't get stale. And, and I bet every WoW player um, would say that's certainly not true. Um, it definitely yeah. does get, get stale. Um, I have certainly, um, my, my method that I always went with was I'm going to, so I'm going to pay for a month of WoW. This is when I kind of, it was starting to get stale. I would pay for a month of WoW. I would let it expire. And then for those, you know, f say like the next four days, I wouldn't play WoW. And then I'd start to like kind of want to again. So it was kind of like I would take this forced break every you know, every month, you know, every 30 days of playing, I would have four days off. And that way I could kind of like crave it, you know, or, or I could actually want it versus just feeling like I had to do it. And it, it, it kind of worked. Like it was a, a decent method that I, that I, that I followed for a while. And then, um, you know, sometimes I wouldn't renew and it would be, there would be a, a you know, a, a drastic time where I spent, you know, a month away. Um, and then, you know, most recently I had, I had stopped, um, pretty indefinitely. This is my first time kind of seriously back into it. So, um, and how long, how long has it been since you played? <clears throat> like uh, since you played, played it, like, right, you know, right. Day. Um, so that was around um, probably the beginning of Cataclysm. Uh, the release date, um, I should find out for that. But uh, so I I'm going to estimate about four years okay. since, since that's come out because I know there have been um, the, the third expansion after Cataclysm is out, if I'm correct, as of this recording. So <clears throat> it's been at, at minimum three years. Um, so I started, um, this is my WoW history, uh, I started in Vanilla WoW, which, um, if you don't know, Vanilla WoW is classic WoW. People often refer to vanilla things as, that's the classic. So, I started in Vanilla WoW as an Undead Warrior. Um, I did hit max level, uh, before a, uh, the expansion of the Burning Crusade came out. So, um... I did pulse parts of Molten Core. Um, I didn't get very far in that. So the Burning Crusade came out shortly after I had hit uh, the max level and was able to raid in Molten Core. Um, I played a I played a warlock during during the Burning Crusade, and I played pretty heavily through the Burning Crusade. I was raiding in Karazhan, uh, Grohl's Lair, Magtheridon's Lair, uh, or Zolomon, and. Uh, I did Mount Hydro, which Mount Hydro was so cool. Um, I, I really remember like having good times with Mount Hydro. Um, hmm. And then there's also uh, there's a few other raids, Serpent Shrine Cavern that I did a little bit, Tempest Keep a little bit, and then Black Temple, um, which that's where Illidan was, uh, which that may be a character you're familiar I with. Recognize, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. recognize that name. Right. Is he, is he a priest? Illidan is not. So Illidan is, is a demon hunter. He, uh, uh, he, I didn't... Yeah, so the, the demon hunters are um, something like uh, corrupted night elves that have kind of, um, I think they've given their vision for some kind of, uh, like, ultra power. Okay. So they're, they're blind, and they, they have these uh, kind of war glaives and horns. War glaives are like these uh, kind of, I guess, bent uh, swords in a way. <clears throat> So, uh, Wrath of the Lich King came out after Burning Crusade, um, and I, I pretty heavily played through that too, um, through Naxxramas and, um, Anixia and, uh, Ice Crown Citadel. Um, I did a little bit of the Ice Crown Citadel, did not fully make it through there. Um, and then there was also Trial of the Crusader and Wrath of the Lich King. And then Cataclysm is where I kind of started falling off. Um, I just, you know, I've been playing pretty heavily. Um, it's probably like, I don't know, probably three years or so, um, you know, off and on, but mostly on. And then uh, I just kind of, I was like, man, this this isn't fun anymore. And, you know, one of those times when that month expired, it was just kind of like, 
that was the end. And then now, you know, three years later, I have returned to Azeroth and um, I brought you with me. <laughs> and <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty exciting, like, kind of seeing it. Um, like, I'm re-kind of discovering things and you are discovering things. And I, I am... I am watching these new uh, places that I don't know um, or, or, or these places that I've been before, but they're slightly different. Or it's like, um, you know, it's like, oh, I recognize this place, but it looks a little bit different. And these quests are different. I don't remember doing this. Like, I remember doing these quests, but I don't remember doing this. Or, or we've made it to a spot where there are quests um, that seem to be unchanged. Um, so it's really cool seeing like it's like you know and, and and i believe that all came through cataclysm that rework was done through cataclysm so when the cataclysm expansion pack came out every not everything was changed but a lot of things were changed and so you had people that had been through these questing zone through these starting zones you know uh you know probably 10 times or so and they remember these quests and they they've done them and then you had Cataclysm come, and, and it they revamped all these quests, and they, they updated these graphics, and um, they really kind of reinvented the game in a way. I mean, it was still the same game. You know, collect quests, kill things, get XP. It was, you know, it was still an RPG, but they really polished it and, and added things to it and made it a little less, and maybe a little bit more difficult to be stale. Um, now, also, with that, with that coming... Um, there was the the kind of uh, what people call the dumbing down or or the more casual experience through World of Warcraft. Um, like XP was was lowered that the XP amount you needed to level was lowered, um, and it just seems like um, all the enemies seem to hit a little bit less hard um, or. Uh, <clears throat> It's, it almost seems like boss mechanics have have been kind of dumbed down as well, and and the, the strategy element has greatly greatly decreased, from what I can tell from when <clears throat> when in Vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade and, and honestly basically all the way up to to uh, Cataclysm, it seemed like everything just kind of got dumbed down. You had people, you know, in in Vanilla WoW, if you got an epic item. That was a big deal. It, it was difficult to get an epic item. Now, in the Burning Crusade, it was a little bit easier to get epic items. And in Wrath of the Lich King, it was a little bit easier to get epic items. And they, they were kind of following this, like, I guess, casual path, which is great in a way. I, I, uh, I understand why they would do that and why it would appeal to more people. Because a lot of people can't put the time in to commit to these, you know, three-hour raids a night or, or or just, I have to play this game so I can keep up with my guild or, um, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna lose lose my place or, you know, just just something like that. Right, right. Um, so, <clears throat> let's talk about, um, we initially, when I was going to start playing WoW again... I had gotten the idea of I wanted to go on a private server and I wanted to play Vanilla WoW again. And again, that goes back to me thinking that the current WoW state was too easy. So again, with the epics that you could um, get very quickly or the um, raids that you could complete very easily... Um, and that was something I didn't want to do. So um, I, I, I got on a private server and I invited Jess to join me. Uh, we made two Horde characters. And after uh, two or three hours of us playing together, I kind of realized that, man, this is a lot of information for her to take in. Also, I felt very alone on that server. Like, I didn't feel connected to like the rest of the population or any of my friends list like I couldn't chat or anything like that so um I thought well, that made and, and to be fair when we started playing it the the server was kind of having issues uh we couldn't really 
I mean, I didn't, I didn't notice it. Of course, I didn't notice what I was missing on that server at the time, but I, I couldn't imagine playing on that server now, even after just playing it for, for the last couple of days for real, because that server, it, it didn't have nearly the interface that that the real game has so i can see definitely how that wouldn't satisfy you like all that did was peak an interest with you for the game like that really wasn't the game and like to me <laughs> right right and and in some ways the newer wow is overwhelming with like the interface like they have many more windows and things you can customize than than like vanilla wow but vanilla wow also like those things are there to help you in, in the current state of wow versus uh there were fewer things in old wow but you were much more on your own and you had to figure stuff out on your own or or you know you could google it which a lot of people did or they used um they used add-ons for wow that would allow you to kind of modify like a, there was a quest um, I remember, I remember using some, uh, quest, quest helper, I want to say it was called until eventually, you know, so many people were using that because it would do what, uh, you know, it would show on the map where the quests were and where you could find what you needed to, rather than trying to read through the quest description, like you should have, um, yes. people just wanted to instantly go and know where to go. And I guess people were impatient. And you know, after your third or fourth character, like I, you know, you could, you could, you could get that way. Like, ah, oh, man, I don't know where these things are, or you know, I don't quite remember where to go to kill these. And it just, um, it, it could be, you know, just daunting. And like, man, I don't feel like doing this, but I, I, I want to play, you know. But it's just, it's, it, it's, it's too much for me to, to handle right now. Um. So we ended up on uh we ended up going with the free level 20 account um that way neither one of us had to commit to anything and yes well we went we remember uh like i i got home and i was like oh brad i want to i want you i want to get on i want to get on here and play this with you and we went on we went to get on that surfer uh, after i think we played it one night for like three hours and then the next day i came home from work and like all day long at work, I was like, man, that was really fun. I, I want to play that again. And we got home and like, I waited for you to play your other games. And then we, we logged on and that server was down. And it was like, like, I think we waited a couple hours and it was still down. And I was like, well, maybe we should just play the real game because we can play at a level 20 for free and see if you like it. And that like, I think that isn't that kind of what pushed us into the real game was the fact that our our server broke. <laughs> that is, before. yes, yes, I, I I had forgotten about that. That is definitely true. So, um, you know, the private server kind of pushed us into um back into WoW and got Blizzard, uh, you know, two customers. So uh, that was a um pretty good uh pretty good move um for blizzard or i guess that was our move but um blizzard got our money and the private server didn't <laughs> um, so we started we started we we made the account we 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 downloaded well i have i had to download it i think you actually still had the real game i i didn't i had to download it uh and we we had to remake a character and i i remember you telling me like how how exciting and like how much time you would spend making like because we like you've logged into wow with me and you've showed me your characters before it meant nothing to me at the time but like i know that i know from you playing video games that your character creation is like it's a big deal to you like i know that you like to invest time and and so like when we when we were on that private server, we kind of rushed through it because I like we wanted to play. But then like when we got the real game, it was like okay, hold 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 on a second. We got to like build this character that you're gonna like potentially yeah. like have for a, like a while. Yeah, like this is the real deal now. Like uh, the the private server was like a maybe kind of thing, but it was like once you got on the Blizzard server, it's like all right, now we have to 
to take it serious. Take it seriously. Yeah, this is a big deal. Right. I remember, like, I remember being really, like, well, I mean, obviously, I remember it was, like, 30 days ago, but I was excited to make my real character because, like, I know that that's, like, a big deal to people that play WoW. <laughs> yeah, so, well, and, and, and naming it, too, like, that's something that um, I, I always struggle with, and, um, and it just, you know, I could spend, I mean, I, I'm sure... In my lifetime, I've probably spent over like three hours total naming WoW characters, trying to figure out something that I like that isn't taken, which is, you know, there's so many WoW players, so many WoW characters, it's just it's really hard to find something that isn't taken. Man, I'm pretty happy with my WoW name, even though, like, it was it was a typo. Like, I, I, I accidentally typed the wrong name, and it ended up being pretty, like... Pretty okay, pretty fitting, I think, for like, you know, fantasy. I don't know. Yeah, just made up names that. Yeah, made up names. <laughs> so we made. Um, so we both decided. So I had always played uh, Horde, and I kind of predetermined that we're going to play Horde again, and we're going to go on the server that I've been on, and that I'm you know, kind of familiar with. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but the game is entirely the same no matter what server you're on. Okay. It, it's just kind of like the way they've divided the population in order to kind of, I guess, cut down, um, basically to, to divide the population and, um, you know, to, to keep things kind of in order rather than have, you know, I don't know how many players there are right now, but rather than have, say, 6 million people <laughs> in one game, like, that's just not going to work. So, so, time out, I have a question about this. When they, you said that they do server, like they do updates every Tuesday. Is that for every server or is that for the one that we've chosen? Like, do they break it down into like groups of servers for the update? No, it, it, is, it is the entire game. So the okay. entire WoW population re re receives that at the same time. Okay. Um, and a realm is also referred, a server is also referred to as a realm. Okay. So they're interchangeable. Um, now, you we decided we were going to go on the horde, and then um, we went into character selection or creation, and you ended up choosing a. You wanted to be a troll. <laughs> I did. Now that is, um, you you choose a race, and then from the race you can pick most classes. You can't pick all classes. Certain races can be certain classes, which if you play WoW, obviously you know this. Um, I did not, though. I did not. I, like, I, I, I looked at them and, like, I basically picked what I wanted to do off of looks. And it was, it was between undead, troll, and I think what, goblin? Is that goblin? Yep, yep. Uh, and... Uh, man, I really, I don't remember our exact conversation, but you, like, you helped me narrow it down, and, and, and I landed on Troll for whatever reason, uh, and really, like, at that point, I don't think that, like, I don't think that really mattered to me, like, I don't know enough, obviously, like, I don't know enough to know what, what kind of character, what types do what, uh, and then, like, when we had to pick is it class? Is yes, it a class? Yes. So when we had to pick that, I, I mean, I do like you told me to to hover over and it would tell me like you know if they're damage or, <clears throat> or range or you know whatever whatever their kind of specialties. Is that is that the word? Uh, yeah, like their role and and okay. kind of how they the classes how they interact with their enemies or their allies. Okay, so I. I think that's why, just based on reading over over their roles, uh, I, I decided to, to go with the druid because uh, what is the their role is they they kind of have everything. That was their that was why I landed on that is that they they could do anything, and I wanted I didn't want to my first wow character. You know, if I stuck with it, I wanted it to be a, a versatile character. Uh, so that's. That's how I. That's how I like landed where I did on my character creation. Right. So you had a troll druid, and um, 
initially back in vanilla wow um trolls could not be druids uh i believe only tarin could be druids uh on the horde side and then on the other side uh on the alliance side i believe only night elves could be druids so when they added that um they've kind of expanded over the years they've expanded what classes can do or what races can do what classes so um you wouldn't have been able to do that uh in the vanilla wow um that's that's interesting (laughs) so i ended up with a troll because i wanted to start where you started so i also picked a troll and i was thinking like well i could pick a troll or an orc because they start in the same zone they they are uh they share a starting zone um after i created the troll and we started um i did decide to go with a troll um and i decided to go with a priest um i've never had a maximum level priest um so i i thought you know um, i could do damage or heal um so i did go with a priest and as i started to say after i created the troll i instantly learned that if i had created an orc i would have not been starting with you um like the trolls start um on you know um i believe is that echo isle so those trolls start um where the you know um off the coast of duratar at the southeast coast uh, by sinjin village um they now start over there where you used to quest from sinjin village and i didn't know that because i hadn't had not created a new character since um, you know, Cataclysm, or if I did create a character, I think I created a goblin, and I the goblin was new to, uh, I believe, Cataclysm, so it, it was, it, it didn't even, um, I never experienced a new starting zone like that. I didn't know it had changed. Um, I knew a lot had changed, but I didn't necessarily know that specifically had changed. Hmm. Did you say that out loud to me when we were building our characters? I don't remember you... Yeah, I, I don't I don't think I realized um I don't know, I may have said that. I can't remember or I, I definitely realized we weren't in Valley of Trials, which is <laughs> where we started in um on the private server when we were, you know, killing the the tus the boars and getting the cactus apples and uh killing yeah. the, the imps. Yeah, so Keep looking for cactus apples uh in the real game. I have yet to find any. <laughs> Way. that might be a valley of trials exclusive and they might have removed them like i i don't know you you could go over there it's not far from from where we are right now but um you could go take a look if you really wanted to if you really wanted to get your cactus apples um, so um let's see so we we loaded into um the uh echo isles And you now have control of your character. And um, we're not going to go into the actual Echo Isle gameplay yet. But um, we do want to kind of leave off here. And um, we're going to cover controlling your character and getting into Echo Isles. We're going to do that on the next episode. And this was kind of our our intro as to where we both stand with World of Warcraft. um, Our our history of World of Warcraft. And... um, I will give one spoiler that I am um, I'm very excited. It's it's been a lot of fun getting back into this and um, leveling and seeing like old places that I um, had kind of forgotten about or doing quests that I do remember. You know the ones they hadn't changed and even seeing the ones that they did change. You know the the ones they added because there are, are new mechanics that they just n- did not have in the old game. So um, we're definitely going to talk about those and. Um, we're going to go over the zones that we've um, been going through and, and what kind of stood out to us. And um, is there anything that you wanted to add to that, Jess? Um, anything that your your thoughts are as of, um, you know, right now? Uh, well, without without getting into to too much of what we've done, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, what is this just – we're recording this on Monday night. I think we started playing this on Thursday evening last week. Um, I I ended up having Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off of work, which is never happens. And 
and I, I think I've spent uh, at least like a third, if not a half of my time awake playing playing this game and and for for me to say that is is quite the quite the statement because I I do not hold interest in video games like I I get bored I'd rather I'd rather do something else uh, and so like I, I have found myself like anxious I think we, we went out and bought a new hard drive so that I could I could play on a different computer when I wasn't at my house like I mean I've I've kind of really jumped jumped uh jumped headfirst into this and it's been really fun to me and that's i mean that's saying something i'm excited to keep playing it and to 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 learn it all uh i mean you know obviously i don't think i can learn it all but for me to be this interested in a video game is that's saying something so yeah and this game is not crash bandicoot so it's not but <laughs> but I can't guarantee that I'm gonna stop playing WoW when Crash Bandicoot comes out next year, remastered on PlayStation <laughs> Four, which I will have to go buy because I don't even own a PlayStation Four. But uh, it'll be—I it, don't know if uh, Crash Bandicoot might give WoW a run for its money next year and my attention because I'm really, really looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, well, if we're still playing WoW next year. <laughs> Uh, around Crash Bandicoot time, I'll I'll remember that, and we'll be able to we'll be able to deal with it when it comes. If I'm still playing WoW in like six months, like that'll be a record for me in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be pretty impressive. I I would be I would be impressed if if, if I saw you doing that. Uh, all right, guys. So next week we're gonna talk about uh, Echo Isle and kind of um, what Jess thinks about controlling her character <laughs> because it is interesting. You will want to hear this. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to see, um, we're going to see where we end up as far as time goes when we're talking about the Echo Isles, uh, next week. And, um, we'll just kind of let you know what we've been through. And I, I mentioned, you know, what kind of quests stood out and stuff that I've noticed that has changed. And obviously Jess wouldn't have noticed anything that's changed. So, um, thank you. And, uh, we'll see you next week.